Hello everyone, good morning. Thank you all for uh, being here. I'm really happy to be here as well today because um, I got to see all the familiar faces I saw from, from uh, last time. So, and I'm really excited to get to know the rest of you today as well. So uh, today we're starting off with this keynote talk about the joy of OSS. There won't be any technical stuff in here. I'm just going to talk you through a little bit of my journey through Fable and the things I've been working on as of late. All right, so who am I? My name is Zaid. I uh, specialize in .NET and JavaScript uh, technologies, but as of late, obviously, I'm working with Fable a lot. So today, I wanted to talk about that. So my journey with Fable, it's, um, I've been working with Fable. I'm going to talk about this, of course. I've been working with Fable for quite a long time. And just to get a feeling of, um, just to, to see how, uh, how long people uh, knew Fable here, does anyone know Fable Arch? Wow. OK, that's, that's, how, old, that's how old I've been working with, uh, with Fable. That was the time where, where there was this thing called Fable Arch, which is the predecessor of Fable Elmish. And uh, when Fable was still working with FSx files and where packages were published to NPM, and yeah, that's a, that's a very long time ago. That's a pre-webpack stuff with Fable. So um, yeah. So when I started learning F Sharp, um, I really liked it, of course. And uh, I wanted to make more stuff. I wanted to make more applications because that's how you start learning a language. And um, Every time I start wanted to build something, it wasn't really obvious. I could go with a silly console application or make some uh, REST API, but that was boring. That was very boring, and I couldn't do anything uh, special. And um, this, and then Fable came in, and uh, it seemed that a lot easier that you could just write some code and see it do something on screen. That's a good way to. That's a good way to learn a language, and that's how I wanted to. I wanted to learn more F Sharp. I wanted to do more with it, so I started to build. I started building things, and that's where it all started, on one pull request for Fable Arch in January 2017, something like that. And um, as soon as I got started with it, I saw how uh, the community was really, really helpful. For example, Maxime by Maxime was still working at, with Fable by, at, the, at that time as well. Maxime and Alfonso helped me a lot uh, to get get started, um, understand a lot of things, and um, it just it just took off. And after all this time, I think um, like uh, I've been working with it all this time as well. And I think after all this time, I could summarize it that I've really had a blast during all of this. And uh, today I wanted to tell you why. So, yeah. So this is one of uh, one of important stuff for me. Why I'm working with OSS a lot of, as of late. It is. I think a lot of you started programming as a hobby, and and you start like making making small things. Maybe make a silly console application that asks you for your favorite color and your amazed by this silly application and before you know it suddenly it's all you do full time you start asking other people about their favorite color as well so and then you then you get the joke running of okay now your hobby is your work so you don't have to work anymore actually but um my, with my experience that fades rather quickly and your work just starts being work. Of course, it's still enjoyable because you hopefully know what you're doing, but still, it is work. And uh, I think with open source, we have this great, uh, we can make this great distinction between, okay, when you go to work, you do your work stuff, but with open source, you could get back to your, your hobby. You could get back to your playground. You could get back to your things that you can choose what to make, you can choose what to do. and. Um, I think it's really important so that programming doesn't lose its charm in in a way. I've heard that with F Sharp it wouldn't do it wouldn't lose its uh, its charm anyways, but uh, I will put that to the test at some point when I when I have the opportunity to actually work with F Sharp in a production environment. All right, yeah. The second very very important thing is that, however. 
uh, however, it, wherever you could work, it all depends on the domain and the domain problem you work with at work. But usually, usually you're, yeah, it also depends on your work, but usually you, you're doing the same thing. You're working with some specific problem unless you always work on very, very different project, which is, I think, not uh, a common case. You usually just have the same, like you have different projects, but you have the same, more or less the same problems. And that's where OSS becomes really, really cool, is that you can just look for more interesting problems if you are bored with what you're, whatever you're doing. And um, I think a lot of the times you can get problems that you will never, ever come into, uh, never, never come across basically in your day-to-day -day job because no one, for example, no one starts uh, a project and having to write their own JSON converter. That's, you to just pick up whatever library someone did but again, so no one would ever build that library if, um, if he didn't just go to open source and actually start working on it. Someone needed it, someone wrote it, and put it online. So that's not a problem you, uh, you solve day to day. These are interesting problems, and you could uh, like see it, uh, acknowledge it, and then go work, uh, go work step by step. I'll, look, I'll talk about the challenges of uh, building libraries and um, what, what we come across usually. But this is uh, this is for me very important. I could get I could have interesting problems. I could see, just go through the issue, see if something interests me, and then go through it. If I have time, of course. So when it comes to like, of course, for examples, all the libraries I've made are mostly things that I would never go in my production and say, okay, it's time to build this uh, this very large library because I need it. It's usually a problem that a lot of people have, and you can work on it and publish it and see how it goes. All right, so this is, I think, the most important next to, next to having interesting problems. Uh, it's not that when you work with OSS, it's not, like, it's not that you learn from the problems you're solving. I think we learn the most because we're solving these problems with other people. I think I've had the same, uh, the, I had the best experience with the, with the F-Sharp community because we always, when you, have, we have, when you have a problem, they're always open and we start these discussions, right? Issues are not really issues anymore. We have these discussions and someone would come up with, okay, but we have, we have it like this. How can we move forward? How can we do it such that, um, uh, that the, it accounts for more cases, that, it, that we generalize it better or uh, that we can guide the user in some way to write, to write correct code all, and these all kind of things. And I think these discussions are really, really valuable besides solving the actual problem. Just getting perspective from so many different people helps you a lot. I learned, I learned a, lot, a lot more than I would expect from, a lot more than I would get from my own colleagues at work. Well, basically because we're just a, a small company, so I really enjoy ha having to uh, enjoy working with OSS because there are so many diverse community, there are so many diverse perspectives, and um, especially with the F# -sharp and Fable community, usually people who learn F# -sharp are not do not have F# -sharp as their first language. Some have PHP, a lot of them have C# -sharp, some of them have JavaScript, so they have all these kind of ideas and and models of how things uh, could be. So it's really interesting that they all mold it together uh, to make something that actually works for all of us. So that's like one of the most important thing I uh, think about when I, work, when I think of uh, OSS projects. All right, so yeah. So I've, besides working on OSS project, what we actually do is there is this um, funny dynamic with uh, with people working there. You have people who are building libraries and you have building who are using libraries. I don't think one is more important than the other. There's actually like, it's always a feedback loop between the two and as a library author, you are a user and a user, you also kind of authoring the library because uh, the library depends on your needs. So there's always this feedback loop and the cycle that has to go through when, when, with every cycle of some, from any kind of software. Because library authors start with, um, they start with a problem. Okay, what, what problem do I have? Can I make a library out of it? Can I put it online? And, um, uh, and uh, see how people start reacting to it, see how people start using it. And there are a lot of challenges with that. The same goes with the users. Uh, the same goes through, there are a lot of challenges of 
using a library or how to uh, how to solve your specific issues if you um, if you if the library you, you you use doesn't do what you want do you just make an issue do you fork it these kind of things they are very um, sometimes it, it can get very overlooked so there are th I think there are good ways to to solve these kind of problems so let's go through um, let's go through the challenges we see in building the library all right because of course I've built a lot of them I'm usually on this um, my problems usually come down to, to these ones. It comes, it, first when you start making a library, you start from the problem context. You have some problem and you start, uh, and you start, building, you start solving it. But again, y um, you know only how to solve your own specific problem, uh, but your solution, you want your solution to work for multiple use cases for the user. And then you start working from, okay, how does the user, how does the, you, the user would use this, app, uh, this, this API, how would, uh, if if you had some a different use case, how would you do? How you would use that, uh, et cetera, et cetera? Again, it's with generalization. We don't know. We don't know how to generalize the generalize the, the libraries, and um, you end up with very leaky ex abstractions. So these things are very hard because you basically have a very sim limited set of input to make something generic, which doesn't work for a lot of a lot of cases because. Um, Libraries tend to do a lot of things at the same time. Uh, some libraries uh, call themselves opinionated or, uh, or specific. I think most libraries are opinionated, even if they don't say that. But these ones, the, the, when they call them opinionated, uh, when they call themselves opinionated, they're usually very specific in scope. And that's, I think, the best way to uh, to build these building blocks, to build these small pieces, is to make them as specific as possible, one task at a time, to make uh, to make it actually work. Because you end up with uh, a lot of leaky abstractions if you if your library tries to do all things, right? And I take it for example, uh, one of my libraries, uh, Fable Remoting, it does one thing, and it does that only. It doesn't try to do. Um, like it does communication and doesn't do authorization, doesn't do security. It just does one thing and hopefully does it right. And um, yeah, so scoping, really important. Do not try to use a lot of things at the same time. It, it, will, go pro it will probably go wrong. So um, yeah, another challenge slash, it's a good thing and a bad thing. Uh, we have a lot of code in the F-Sharp community. I sometimes go through a GitHub project. I like to go through them and see what other people are writing. Really, uh, a lot of times it's really interesting to see how people uh, write code as well. And I see it's not documented. That's a really a shame because uh, the, pro the project seems like it's tested, it's, uh, it has all kinds of tests, unit tests, integration tests, and then it's not documented. Well, how, how, I am go how am I going to use it? Well, yeah, just read the code because it's self-documenting, right? It's not. Spoilers. Uh, even even a lot of F# -sharp projects have um, have this thing where you where they publish the module itself and make documentation from the XML XML docs. Yeah, that that doesn't really work. You want you don't want the code itself. You want to use, see the use cases. You want to see uh, okay, how can you use this piece of code in that situation, and how can you adapt it to different situations. So undocumented, a lot of undocumented goodness. Please write a lot of documentation. But again, uh, it's it's really hard. A lot harder than a lot harder than you think. Uh, in my experience, a lot of de developers would rather write code than writing English, because they they will just go through the documentation over and over until they think, okay, it's almost something that we can uh, that we can work with. And uh, yeah, so. So this is one of the biggest challenges, writing a good documentation. You start with a very small project, but the use cases are so, so vast, you have the giant readme file. All right, so another problem is the, um, is the limited feedback. When you write something, when you write a library, there's almost never a way, there, there's never a way to know which functions are being used and which aren't. So sometimes you end up with, yeah, features that are actually never used, no one uses them, they're there, no one uses them, but do you, do you keep them there? Do you, 
uh, take them out in the next in the next feature because you you don't know maybe some user is happily using them and you decide in the next version if they're not there anymore do you just remove remove them because you think okay the user can you do this himself uh, the library doesn't help we have limited feedback we cannot know what what users what the users how they're using it so it really really helps if you write about it make an issue or um, yeah, just generally feedback. How are you using it? How could it be better? All these kind of things. Really, really appreciate it when you do so. Okay, of course, we have also limited time when we have to, when we have to work on these things. So uh, if you feel like you have an issue, uh, go for it. Um, try it out. Try to, try to fix it yourself. Go through the code. And uh, hopefully it works for the next time. As for... As for moving forward as the library authors, I think there are a lot of problems, a lot more, a lot more than these as well. And um, one, one of them is that usually annoys me as a, as a library author is when people start starting, uh, starting discussions as an issue, because like I said, issues are not usually issues, they are a discussion. And a lot of uh, maintainers don't, don't realize the, the, the weight when they, when they close an issue because as a result, but the, but the discussion hasn't been resolved, right? So the, uh, I, think, I think you, can, you can't really, uh, you shouldn't really close an, an issue un, un, until the opener is, is okay, um, thinks, okay, this is the way the library does it, so maybe I'll, un, I'll try to understand how it, how it should be. Of course, it's a, it's a bit of a fine line how, how to do that because I've, I'm guilty as well uh, of this as well because if someone uh, starts an issue that discussing an issue that was already discussed a, a lot of times before and the library chooses to do it that way, it's really hard to uh, say, okay, I'll try to do it your way or you can fork the code and make your own version which doesn't really work. It's, it's like a, a bad excuse. If you don't like how it is now, you could fork it and uh, see how and, and you make your own version. So I think we should all make, uh, keep an open mind for, for issues, especially for discussions, because as I said, this is where you learn the most, and this is how you broaden your perspective as a library author. Library users have similar problems, I would say, because they are, they are, they are most impacted by the choices, by the, by the choices library authors make, the, 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 the choices that, that had limited feedback, will be the most poor choices because no feedback means like a bad library, you're not, you're not doing it right because not a lot of people are using it, not a lot of people are actually giving, your, um, giving you insight into how it could be better. And um, yeah, I think very important to give feedback, okay, how, how do you use it, how do you want to use it, and how do you want to move forward? And even um, a lot of people don't know how to get started with this, how to actually help out, help out the library authors. I think you could do a lot, even if, you don't, if you're not involved in OSS, if you, if you don't do a lot of things on your own time. There are a lot of things you could actually do that are really, really appreciated. And starting with a very simple one, uh, the typos. I know a lot of people uh, hate, hate when get, they get pull requests for typos, but yeah, uh, I would really appreciate it if you do it because I make a lot of them. And it's nice to get everything uh, nice and clean because th some other people would read the documentation and they will stumble upon these things and say, okay, this is bad. So it, it degrades the quality of the code. Again, yeah, documentation, you could also add your own documentation. A lot of people add their samples. Very, very, um, very helpful. Suggestions for the library, of course. Yeah, there are a lot of things you could, you could do to help out tests. That's how Fable do, that's how Fable does it as well. If you make an issue, you could write it. It's better to write a test for it, and um, maybe a PR. So, again, when moving uh, again to to actually when moving forward, I think it's good to have an open mind, especially when uh, using something that, uh, especially when when you're unhappy with something. How do you how do you go about it? How uh, you can start making an issue, but starting discussions, I think, are, is 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 pretty much the best and keeping this feed la feedback loop uh, going on and on. All right. So, um, 
of course, this is like a very, we're talking about OSS and it could be, uh, it could sound very obvious. Yeah, you should definitely do OSS, you should definitely help, it's obvious. But I think this is most of most importance for Fable and Fable, the, and Fable community uh, still, because even now after, I think three years, uh, three years since Fable was, uh, was authored on the ruins of uh, Funscript, we're still pretty much in early days because it hasn't been, there are so many areas that it hasn't been explored yet. A lot of users now are uh, focused on, focus on primarily web technologies, but that is definitely not where it ends because there are a lot of, a lot of other runtimes, we talked about this before, a lot of runtimes where Fable could really shine, uh, especially on Node.js, we could build like full stack applications, and there are a lot of a couple of samples here and there, but it's not really, uh, really fully fully explored. Not really, um, there are not really that much bindings made for it. So when I say to explore it, to make more of this, to actually use it on that platform. Same goes for Electron JS. When someone now asks me how to build desktop applications, I would just go Fable Electron JS because you could do all the nice things we're having with the, with web technologies and uh, combine them with Node.js and you could build desktop applications with it. Again, one of the things that is not really explored yet, I've been working with the maintainer of El Fable Electron in the co last couple of days, last couple of weeks, to make it uh, nicer, make, start working on uh, binding for Material UI and hopefully, hopefully move it forward. Another one is, of course, React Native for mobile development. In case you're not very happy with the one that we're building with React with the Xamarin forms, uh, which I'm not really. So uh, React Native, another another really important one. Now we have, I think, one sample using React Native, which is which is really not, which is really just not even scratching uh, scratching the surface of how uh, of how how we could use this thing. And uh, there are a lot of exotic places where you could use it as well, like uh, Fable, like service workers on the cloud. I think today or tomorrow we're going to have a, a talk about this one. And not to forget the database engines because you could still write JavaScript on Postgres databases or you have databases that are strictly JavaScript uh, with a JavaScript engine. So you could just write JavaScript and Fable and compile it to JavaScript to run there. So, oh, that was uh, very fast for me, I think, but uh, thank you all.